Taming the 65816. This video is about best practices to help you get started and to avoid the 65816's numerous traps. Word of warning to the 6502 programmer. Here is a demo I made with Desire. Heaven did most of the coding. He is a very good 6502 programmer. He made a voxel engine, 3D engine, Wolfenstein engine, etc. As seen in the demo. He is an Atari programmer and has made a lot of demos for the 8-bit range and Lynx. He suffered greatly at the hands of the SNES. My main job was finding out why this bit of perfectly working code now crashes horribly. So if you are experienced in 6502, don't get cocky. The 65816 will handle your ass fast. You really need to stop, step back and adjust yourself to the 65816 and not keep thinking it's like a 6502 because that is a fast trip to pain town. However, with a few simple tricks and discipline, you can keep it caged and under control. Naming conventions. In the days of old, the age of cardboard old, the languages were typeless. Forth, Fortran, COBOL, COMOL, Smalltalk, etc. We still have these today, for some reason, people thought types were a pain, and hence we have Python, Ruby, and JavaScript. For some reason, these new languages frown upon what I'm going to talk about and prefer to write tests to cover everything to help. Anyway, assembly is a typeless language too. To combat this problem, name last was invented. So when you opened a record, personal database is the classic example, person, title, last name, first name, phone, and address. You don't know what anything is, so you append it to the end, and thus, person record, title string, last name string, first name string, phone number, address string. Then, at Microsoft, there was a man from Hungary, and in Hungary, like many other cultures, they write their names last, then, first. He came up with the idea of putting the type up front, thus, Rec person, stro title, stro last name, stro first name, number phone, stro address. And this became known as Hungarian notation. For example, lives byte, be lives, map x word, w map x, score long, l score, anim data long pointer, lp anim data. I prefer Hungarian notation, it works better with autocomplete. For example, when I do LDA open square bracket, I can then type LP, then invoke autocomplete, and now the list will be filtered to all things that are long pointers. If I don't see what I want, then it's not an LP and my code is wrong. You don't have to stick to just byte word long pointer long pointer. It is best to talk about what they are logically as well. So if animation struct, call it atom struct. Just don't go nuts and end up in the LPWSTR craziness. I also extend this to functions in 65816, in that an L function, or function long, denotes that this function needs to be JSL2 and not JSR2. It's a very important distinction and will nail you many, many times. Autocomplete will help in this case as you will get into the habit of typing JSLL, then invoke autocomplete, and if the function isn't there, your code is wrong. For absolute beginners, I would go as far as to say, hang the two extra clocks and buy per core, and just do everything long. And once you know how your code is used and is working, then optimize and remove long when not needed and gain the two clocks back. How to deal with AXY sizes? Basically, two methods. Global standard, i.e. A is 8 and XY is 16, and that is how it is to be. This keeps it simple. If you ever change from A8, XY16, then you restore back to the A8, XY16. This does get a little wasteful at times, but it keeps it simple, and you follow the rule, and you mostly won't have any issues. As is needed. This saves clocks and bytes, but takes a lot of upkeep. To assist, here are some best practices. Before every function, set where you think A in index should be. While it might be fine and work because the code above already sets it, you might change the code. You might insert a function between them three months later, and then you get a very odd bug. 
So be disciplined. Every function explicitly set the register sizes. But it falls through. No, set them every time. I also like to use tail end sizing, i.e. my function underscore a8xy16, for example. You could also go with lowercase a, uppercase a, and the same with xy. If using 64 tasks, the dash capital C will enable case sensitive label matching. So you can either type what you currently are when you call it, and then if it's wrong, you will get an assembly error telling you that my function axy doesn't exist because it's my function axy, and thus the assembler will catch you having the wrong size for you. Or if you have autocomplete, you can then inspect the end of the function string to see that it matches your current state. You can also do this Hungarian style if you wish, just be sure to come up with a strict order i.e. does L for long call come first or after? Maybe you do long name last style. It's up to you. Registers being the wrong size is the most common issue with the 65A16. There are even commercially shipped titles that have cases where it's wrong. Seven Saga by Enix, for example. In the boot sequence, even. But it just so happens the code stays on track so nobody noticed it. It doesn't always stay on track though. Sometimes it goes horribly wrong. Variable declarations. Make everything word aligned to start with. I.e. if you want a byte, make a word. Why? Because if you have two bytes such as health and lives, and let's say you in some accident write to health with a 16 bit A value. And who knows what the upper eight bits have in them. Might be zero, which will just kill the player. Might be a hundred. But now you try and work out what happened to the lives. You didn't touch the lives code. How did it break? Well, lives is fine. Health is wrong. Lives is a low access variable that trapping rights to lives would find it. But that is not always the case. So make it a word and then put a breakpoint on read write on the upper byte. Once you run out of space, you'll have a lot of tried and tested code that you can then pack variables back together and carry on. For example, lives. You set it at the start, you deck it in one spot, maybe award one some points milestone or coins, and check that it is zero. Once all of that code is written and tested, you won't really touch it ever again. For beginners, I also recommend avoiding the 2100 to 2200 and 4200 to 4400 regions, or even just block out all of 2000 to 4FFF in both bank 7E and 7F then put read-write breakpoints, watch points on those regions. This will help you track times when you accidentally write to registers while in RAM, and you'll be able to trap it, and also avoid any random data trashing that would result if you don't have the debugger open, for example. Once you're getting low on RAM, you can then allocate these areas back as most of your code will be written and you will have a solid grasp of best practices. Data bank. When you jump between banks, the program bank changes. The data one doesn't. This is both really handy and a pain in the ass, in that you can pass it to a function to pull data from the right bank, i.e. put player one animation table in one bank and player two in another. Same point as all round. But it also gets very tedious to push bank, push program bank, pull bank, then restore bank. And maybe you forgot to pull and your stack gets corrupted upon return and ends up in no man's land. Not fun. But 32k is a lot of ancillary data. Small stuff. A lookup table, fast mole table, an index to bit table, and an index to bit clear table. That sort of program data tends to be small. Sure, anim data and sprite metadata and text will eat banks and banks. But the line to line, not so much. Why not make a bank to hold all of it? Let's say bank 85 holds all the data for banks 80 to 84. So now you can set the DBR to be 85. And as you jump between your main code banks, you just don't have to worry about what the DBR is. DP is always in bank zero, so you can access any data in bank 0, 40, 80, CO from any other bank at any time. Slightly slower, as you have to index from a DP register, but it's there. Why bank zero's data is a precious resource. And now you have your bank 80 and 85 at your back and call without needing to touch DBR. Having your data for a function in another bank and file is not ideal. 
But 64 Tasks' section can help in this manner. By having a shared databank section, you are free to open it and add to it as you please. For example, you don't even need to worry about finding it at the end of a function. You can just put it exactly where it is consumed. Helping hand. I've made a custom hack of Sour's Messen S emulator. A link to it is in the description below. This is for 64 tasks. If you're using something else, it's easy enough to put your label file over. I've added label based breakpoint support. So if you want to set a breakpoint in your code to appear in the emulator, you just do underscore break all caps. You can put anything else after it if you need to have more than one in one scope. Note it looks for break. And if it finds it, it gets treated as break. Asserts. When you assume something, you assert it to be true. These days you make tests. Back then, you made asserts. I've added a few pre built for you. So these can be used to double check that the size of A and XY are what you think they are. And if they are not, the debugger will stop and tell you it failed. So, underscore assert underscore A8, make sure that A is in fact 8 bits. For example, here is a case I've set up where it fails. Also, introducing the was that a JSL check? Underscore assert underscore JSL. This will mostly detect if a jump to a function was a long. There is also underscore assert underscore JSR to make sure that it wasn't a long. No more corrupted stack from getting it wrong. You can also do conditions. Thus, you can check array bounds, for example. If you have an array that is 16 big and X is passed in, don't assume it is, assert it is under 16. Underscore assert underscore X underscore LT underscore 16. There is a table of what equates do in the main readme file on the link. Are you writing to registers? Is your databank one that can see registers? Don't assume, assert. Underscore assert dbr underscore ne underscore 0x7e underscore end and underscore dbr underscore ne underscore 0x7f. Macros help. Watch. This is so you can check if memory location is written to. I've included device names as well. Load store is the classical name, but also read and write for modern people. This is good for tracking a value or making sure the upper byte is not written to when it shouldn't be, as I mentioned earlier. That is all for this video. Next time I will probably talk about VRAM allocation and how to do it.